Hi, I'm Rob from Studio Academy, and this is how to make endless materials with Substance Designer. First thing to say, it's physically impossible to generate endless textures, but the good news is we don't really need that. The only thing we need is to avoid repetitions. If we don't see the same texture over and over again, then the result looks infinite. Before we start, some boring but important thoughts. The solution has to be easy and quick to use. It has to work with every kind of texture. And I personally avoid scattering single tiles textures because it's not possible to create random natural or weird shapes, tones, and you cannot add details into the grouts. I also avoid very big resolution textures because, you know, they are difficult to manage, easy to load, and they will repeat anyway, soon or later. So, let's split the big problem in smaller ones and face one at a time. First issue is visible repetitions. This is actually very, very easy to solve in Substance Designer because, you know, by changing the random seed, we can generate an infinite number of brothers of the original texture. In 3ds Max, we use multi-texture and barricon tiles to randomize those textures on the object. I will show you how to make it at the end of this tutorial. Second problem is these new textures are not tileable together. The reason is that on the edges, half cut bricks or stones look different in every new instance. So what to do? Let's delete and replace them with the ones in the first texture. Basically, we are solving the repetition problem by changing the inside of each texture and the tiling problem by keeping the outside always the same. Ladies and gentlemen, we have endless textures. The third and the last problem is to create a smart customizable mask that change depending on the tile shapes, but Substance Designer will help us on doing this. So now, let's go. Here we are in Substance Designer. Let's start with an empty graph template. Let's change the name of the graph in Endless Mask and we can start. Now, we need a output node, which will be the last node in the graph and it's going to be our mask. So let's write here, mask in the identifier and the label. Here we are. And we need some, you know, start and noise or, or, or pattern to work with. I pick a brick one and I scale up to get more bricks. Here we are. So what can we do now? We can use the float fill, which is a node, it's a special node, it's a brand new node that does nothing by itself, but it it's like a translator, so it allow you to use other float fill node, like, for example, the float fill to color, float fill to gradient, and what we're going to use today, the float fill to position. So the float fill to position is a weird looking node, is a weird, weird looking result, something green and red, but actually it show you the position, both in X and Y of each tile. And that's why it's red and green, because you have the red channel, which is X, and the white channel, which is uh, green. So let's move this on the left. And, you know, to get the position of the, each brick on X separated from the position on Y, we have to split, you know, this image in the two channels, the red and the green. And to do so, we can use the node, which is called RGBA split. Here we are. Let's collect, connect this float filter position to the RGBA split. And then we can get, we can see the preview of the red channel. You see, it's basically a gradient that change color for each. There is a different value of gray for each brick. And this is how uh, Substance Designer uh, show you the position of each tile. So. We have the red, but also we need the green. And we can use a transformation 2D node as a dummy node just to get the preview. So this is the red channel. I copy the transformation 2D and I get the green channel. And as you can see, 
in the X we have information that goes in this way horizontally and in the green channel we have information that goes in this way in vertical in, in vertically so let's start from the red channel the X here we are what we need remember is the mask of the border so we need to contrast this texture and to get you know the just the white very very bright you know uh, bricks out of it so to do so we can use the histogram scan node and we if, if we link this to the gradient and we go up with the position you will see that bam, magically you know the texture appear starting from the white of course a mask in our case have to be white or black no grays whatsoever so we go up with the contrast to one and as you can see now the mask is perfect this is the right part of the mask we, we have you know we need the the left part of the mask and to do so we have to uh, invert grayscale this gradient unfortunately we have we inverted also the color of the grouts and so we need to use a blend node and put you know the original grouts on the top and multiply them you know to get them black again so now this is the original gradient inverted and we can run another histogram scan on it to get the left part of the horizontal mask now we will you know expose the position in x so we have to change it only once to change both of them uh, but now we need to blend them together and you know how to blend blend note of course one texture in the background one texture in the foreground and then to get both the white areas visible we can change the blending mode to screen or max lighten and tada we have our first part of the smart mask the left and the right part we can copy all this node which is this is one thing i really love about subs and designer you don't have to do things twice you can just you know do it once and then copy the nodes change the inputs and get a different result so i copy all these nodes Ctrl C, Ctrl V, I move them down and then I just change, you know, the input, you know, here from the green channel and ta-da, we have the top and the bottom mask. And what we need to do now is just, you know, to blend them together, we need to blend the top, bottom and the re left and right again with the blend node again in Max Lighten node. Here we are we have our smart mask last step is we need to cover the grouts on the borders so we need these areas white and to do so we can use the edge detect node but unfortunately the edge detect node create something which is black as you can see from here and let's go up a little bit with the resolution so we can get a better preview great and as you can see in the edge detect node we have edged width and edged roundness so we can control you know the size of the thickness of these grouts in a second moment we can expose those two variables um, to change them from the outside from outside substance designer which is really good um, anyway let's go back to the mask you know to cover this area by white we need to invert again so grayscale grayscale invert or let's right inverted grayscale yeah it's that and then now we have these grouts white which are perfect for our mask another blend and we can blend again together the original borders plus the grouts and change the blending mode to max lighten and tada the mask is done and you know we can test our work we can test our graph we can put another kind of bricks here something like that we can you know change 
and attach the input to this new texture and watch the result and it works it works as you can see there's some errors that's why we have to expose the edge width and the edge roundness you know to be able to change them from the outside in order to you know fix every kind of mask we are going to produce but it works it works and that's great um, what we can do to complete the endless mask graph first of all we can expose those positions so we don't have to change them manually but we can change them from the outside from outside subs and designer and that's really important so how can you expose a constant you can go in in on the right of it you see is there is a button here is it there's something that looks like a graph you can click there click on expose and then you know subs and designer will provide you a name for the variable but you know 99 percent of the time i would like to change it so i click on the drop down menu i click on new and i change you know this into position x now i click ok again to you know um expose the parameter and tada you see you cannot change position anymore from here but you have to change it from the graph itself from from the main material from the main graph i would say so you double click here or you double click on the empty area of the graphs to get the attributes and if you scroll down you see here input attributes input parameters and you can click on the eye you know to play with the value you know to get a preview of what you get you know and you see if i change the value the position x change now it changed only for the right part of it if i go here in the histogram scan that you know provide the left part of the mask i can change the position here into position x so position x now the single variable will define two different nodes in subs and designer if i double click here in the empty area i go scroll down and i click on the eye to preview you know the position x slider as you can see now it works fine in each side i have to do the same with top and bottom but this time i will expose position variable with another name not x but i will pick position y and again i will click on the other one position expose position y and now if i double click here in the empty area of the graph i have position x position y i can click on the eye to get the preview and as you can see it works both horizontally and vertically so congratulations you have your own smart mask remember you know you may want to change the thickness of the borders and the roundness of the borders so it's a good idea uh, you know to expose the uh, edge width again here edge width and the edge widthness sorry the edge edge, edge roundness uh, expose edge roundness that's it um, the mask works but there's one last bit to do one last step which is to change the input because if you keep this as your starting texture it doesn't matter where you're going to use the mask this is what you get, you're gonna get and you don't want to you don't want that you want you know to get you what you want to input the texture from the outside because these node this graph will look like you know any node in subs and designer is going to be something like you put inside the graph you get an input you get an output and to do so we need you know to right click add node and create an input grayscale because remember this is a grayscale texture let's change this to input if you want to change the input all the inputs in one shot you should click shift while you drag you know um the pin the output pin and this is it now this is the first part of the tutorial this is our endless mask we can save and go on with the next phase so next thing we need to create is a dummy 
shaders, I mean material for bricks, so we can try the endless mask. Uh, right click on the package name, new substance graph, and this time we're going to pick um, template, a physically based specular glossiness, graph name, we can write down bricks, left to parent 500 500 it's all right hdr low precision in the format because i care about my height maps to get a lot of um, information so i i keep this 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 format um in the drop down menu so let's go on and here we have our bricks if you go in the explorer you can see that now we have five different outputs and you can see the output nodes here in the graph section. What we need to do is now to prepare the uh, Substance Designer interface, you know, to actually see what we are working on. And because we have the specular glossiness uh, definition we need to care about here, we need to go here in default definitions, physically, specular glossiness, and we use tessellation because we want to see some uh, real displacement. Uh, this menu is in the material section of the 3D view. Uh, then, in you know, in the future, in the next future, we are going to come back here in material default edit to change the you know the tessellation factor, which is the dif dif um, displacement quality and the scale, which is the amount, the depth of the um, displacement. Very good. Let's start now. I start every single shader in Substance Designer in the same way. So this is my way to work to start with and I start with one random pattern just to get something and if you think basically this is something that looks like the hide map. So in Substance Designer the first thing you do is the elevation, is the extrusion, the shape of of your object and these goes into the hide map but before going there I normally use a transformation 2D node as a dummy node, as a reroot node, to then you know bring this map in multiple places because I don't want to link this every time I change something. You know, multiple times I want to link it to this uh, reroot node, let's say, and then uh, Substance will do it for me. Anyway, now this is going inside the height map, and as you can see, something changed, but I mean, it's not really clear what's happening here. We are going to um, make it better. We, we are going to, you know, um, customize, you know, the material as um, as we as we because we, we want to we want to, to see something um, better than this, that just a black cube. So to do so, we need a normal map, and we need to link the height map to the normal map node which is a node that translate the height map into normals and we can link the normal node to the normal output and this is a way to get a better preview of your shadows in the GPU here in the GPU render in the 3D view. Uh, then in the diffuse instead of putting just a gray color what we can do is we can uh, get the curvature smooth node and link the normals in the curvature smooth and so here we have something that looks like an ambient occlusion something that looks like cavities and so if we get that the diffuse then you know we have a little bit of shadow more than you know uh, just a, a, pla a planner a flat uh, color a flat um, gray color very good um, one thing we can do uh, for the uh, to improve the height map to improve the displacement it's to have a little bit of a blur because when you have really a, like something like this which is a really sharp texture uh, the software can't handle uh, the let's say this the size of each brick and so you get this an uh, annoying you know um, let's say uh, artifacts uh, to avoid that you know you can use a uh, blur we have a lot of blur here, but we're going to use the Blur HQ grayscale. And so this is what we're going to do. Of course, this is too strong, so we're going to, you know, increase the quality, but decrease the intensity. And as you can see now, the displacement, it looks a little bit better. 
very good remember that you can go into materials default edit and increase the scale if you want to increase the amount of the displacement and you can go up with the tessellation factor if you want to increase the quality but now at least we have a decent preview of what we're working on and if you want uh, stronger shadows you can go in into the normals and increase the intensity of the normals too and as you can see now we have a proper preview which i love um, in the specular, you know, I mean, we are missing reflection, but, you know, we can easily get some reflection into the 3, 3D view, um, working on specular and glossiness. Uh, I mean, my, my, the, the goal of this is not to get a realistic shader, but just to get something, you know, test endless mask. Anyway, let's go and search for F0. PBR dielectric uh, specular um, setting. So this is a node that uh, simulate uh, the um, specular uh, on dielectrics. You know that frontally, you know the strength of the reflection is um, you know uh, weak. So we have like here a drop down menu, and you know depending on the shader you're working on, you can uh, pick uh, uh, I don't know bricks in this case. And uh, but you know a specular itself without glossiness um, it's useless. So we need to get something in here. And normally what I do is to get an Instagram range node, which is just like something which oh sorry, um, which is basically a um, brightness contrast node. Uh, and I get the glossiness from the height map itself because glossiness is like bump in the real world there's no glossiness it's just you know bump that small you can't uh, actually model so I, I go from that and now you see I have some um, reflection on my bricks and I can control you know the amount of um, reflection I mean I, I can I can, I can control the, the brightness with the position uh, so, um, you know, the brightness of the glossiness basically change, you know, the blur of the reflection and with the range you can contrast more the um, glossiness map. Anyway, uh, these are bricks, so I don't want to make them that shiny. Uh, something like this is, is, is okay for me. And now these is basically my starting point. This is how I um, start with every Sapson Designer material. Now just to get something into this uh, graph, not just a single texture of bricks, let's add some variation. So again, we can use the float fill. The float fill is an incredible, uh, powerful node because from, you know, something like this, so from basically it works with white shapes on, on black, uh, on a black canvas. Uh, you can, you can get, you can get, you know, informations about each single shape. So now from the float fill, I can create a float fill to random grayscale, which basically randomize the value of each brick. And you know, if you randomize the value of it, let's let's add some bricks. If you randomize the value of the bricks, then this is an height map, and so you're randomizing the height of each brick. And if you link this to this, you see now they will be completely different in height and that, that's cool but probably it's too much so we can go back and blend the regional the regional uh, brick shape to this and we can go down with the opacity just you know just to get a little bit of, of variations but not that much um, you can also, you know, play with the tilt of the, to create some slopes, you know, because now every single brick is perfectly straight. So from the float fill, we can, you know, again, uh, use the float fill to grow the gradient. As you can see here, we have a gradient and uh, in each brick and you can uh, randomize the angle variations with the angle variation slider. As you can see, we have now different, cool, different, you know, uh, gradient for each brick, and we can again, um, you see, see the result. You see now uh, to get that information on top of these bricks, we have another blend, 
and we put the gradient on top we go a little bit down with the opacity and that's it uh, before we go on with the diffuse color because diffuse comes after the um, height map after the shape of the object we can add some you know some um, rough surface on those bricks just to get something uh, more realistic than now so I will use another blend and this time I'm going to go I mean I mean I mean I, mean, I will change the blending mode to subtract if you go in subtract then everything white will carve into the bricks and so I'm going to I'm start with uh, uh, black and white spot one see this is the result of course I'm going down a little bit with the opacity and I'm going to probably increase the roughness uh, remember that you know we have this blur H HQ grayscale uh, at the end so if you want to get uh, something sharper you should you should change the value you should you, should, you can go even like really really uh, low with this value now this is a 0 0.2 and uh, as you can see it's pretty sharp maybe so if you go it's better if, if we go up to 0 0.4 all right very good very good and now this could be a first layer of you know details and you can you know go up again uh with another blend uh maybe we can carve into just some like uh small um holes like with the dirt too as you can see here we are subtract see we can go down with the opacity I mean you can go so we can go up with the resolution to get a nice 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 preview of what we're working on and that's it now let's say that I don't want to I don't, I don't want to go further than than this um, really is not is not the purpose of, of the tutorial I want to create some diffuse now diffuse it's really cool to make I mean the color it's really cool to make in, in substance designer because you have this powerful node which is called gradient map and the gradient map um, works like this you can start with I don't know something like um, these texture which is like you know the um, uh, the texture with the um, float field to random color to random grayscale sorry you can you can take it uh, from here and now we can assign a different like a different color for each grayscale value so for example if you have I don't know if you want to do some uh, white gaps you can select the black value which is the value inside each grout and put it white or red you see it, it works and then everything else could be I don't know red see so this is this is the best way to control the color when you don't want to spend that much time but anyway there's something even better you can do uh, so you can take uh, information from a from a texture if you click on pick gradient and you you write you you, you draw with the mouse cursor and you click and draw and you drag you can see you can draw some uh, lines and when you when you stop drawing you see you have a uh, different value from that texture uh, assigned to every different gray value in the original uh, input and that's amazing because it takes a second um, of course if you do this on something with a few values a few colors a few few grayscale values let's say you get this kind of effect but if you do that on something which more you know more details you will get you know more even 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 more more um, different colors different variations so you can try we can copy the gradient map you can you know link it to this and you will see now we have this tons of different you know drawings inside and that that's the beauty of it because you can easily then um, blend blend these two the, these two diffuse textures together with with a blend um, with a blend node this goes into background this goes on the top you know I go down a little bit with the opacity and now we have you know this uh, beautiful drawings uh, inside each brick and uh, this is the color the color part of the diffuse um, anyway you know like 
it's it's i mean it's it's something we can do it's something uh, i mean we can um try to do at least uh, to get some informations about the cavities from the curvatures mode. So if you have this curvatures mode texture uh, in the diffuse now, uh, don't delete that. You can some you can add this one on top of the colors. How can you do that? The problem is now this texture is a grayscale texture, as you can see from the output node, and this texture here is a colored texture, as you can see from the output from the orange output node. Um, so we need to convert this one into a color uh, node and you can do that with the gradient map alone you see now it's still the same actually but you know it's it's, it's a color it's a color node for, for for substance and with a blend we can do this this and then you know we can change the blending mode to overlay that's it now, basically, when you have something which looks mid-gray and you want to get you want to uh, get the brighter and the darker uh, informations from that texture, you know, overlay is always a good idea. And as you can see, we have you see we have some shadows from it, and we have some you know nice specular from from it. It's something fake, but it helps sometimes. And of course, you can decide you know the strength of this. So this is the um, you know. Diffuse textures. Uh, the this the shader is done. The shader is done. Now it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if it's made like uh, of bricks or you know from another pattern. Uh, as you can see here, you can try with something different. You can plug this in. Uh, just plug this from here. See, it's it, the substance. You know, change automatically everything uh, when you when you change the first when you change the first note. Um, by the way, by the way, if you want, if you want the endless mask to work, you have to create a new output. So this is the only thing that change if you know how to work in Sapson Designer. If you, you know, if, if your daily job is, you know, if, if, if Sapson Designer is, is part of your daily job, um, and you create materials with that. There's no difference, you know. Um, there's nothing you have to do more than what you normally do to use the endless mask. The only thing, the only thing, is to provide a new output. So we need to create a new output, and in this case, we are going to call this one shape. And the sh in the shape output, you have to provide the shape of your bricks. So. This is all you need to do. Boom. This is all you need to do. The shape of your bricks. If the shape of your bricks change during, you know, the graph, uh, you can you can also decide, you know, to get to the last one and you know uh, create a levels, and then you know contrast this as much as you can. You see, uh, I'm sorry, like this, like this. So you can get you can get the final shape from uh, from the end you see from the from 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 the end of the graph instead of the beginning if you work on the shape if if during the the graph workflow you deform that with I don't know the warp directional warp whatever um, anyway it doesn't matter the only thing that matter is you need to provide a shape the shape of your bricks. Because then, in the last part of the tutorial, we're going to use this, and we're going to use this with the endless mask. Because now, if you, if you you can try, you can try now. You can bring the endless mask graph inside uh, this graph and plug in the, um, the the shape of your bricks, and tada! You see, you have your final, your your, your smart mask, and you have all the exposed variables from the previous graph so you can change you see you can get you can you can change the position of x the position of y and also the edge width and the edge roundness so that's why we need that's why we need the, the shape of your current material all right now the last part of the tutorial is actually really 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 quick 
uh, we are going to mix two different bricks, two different iterations of this brick material using the endless mask. So here we are now for the last part of the tutorial in Substance Designer. We need a new graph. And this time we are going to call this endless bricks. Press OK. Now we have five outputs. We need another one. And this will be the mask mask output just to keep track of the mask shape from the outside. All right, that's it. So what we need to do, if you remember the theory, we have to blend a couple of instances of the same material, which is the brick material. So we can drag and drop a couple of instances of it. Now, the top one, it's the one that goes into the borders. So is the one that never change. So what to do to make it never change? We need to, you know, stop the random seed to work. So we double click on this and please, you know, be sure you double click on this because you don't want to, you want to change the random seed of this one. And then we bring this into absolute, not relative to parent. And also we, you know, just put a constant value here of zero. So, you know, this, the random seed of this, uh, instance will be always zero and it's not going to change if you change the random seed of the of the main graph now the other one it's like it's like this and uh, we keep it you know by default um we don't, we, don't, we don't touch this one because we don't we, we want to we want to change the random seed of this instance uh with the random seed of the um material itself now we have to uh, blend together every uh, output. So let's start from the diffuse. We have a blend. We bring the borders in the foreground, the inner part into the background, and then we need to mask. And of course, we finally use the endless mask and we turn in the shape. Of course, as you can see, there is a mistake here. Um, I, you know, forgot to uh, change and to put the input grayscale as a starting, you know, um, input for the graph. I was playing a little bit around, so I forget. Now I fix it. And if you look at again at the endless brick now, this is exactly, you know, what I was expecting. And, you know, you can also try to change the position X, position Y is going to work. So let's bring it here. This endless mask is going to be the same for each output. So I bring it out here and, um, and this is it. So now, even if it's like not so easy to see, we have the inner part made from the background, the outer part made from the, um, this, this bricks here in the top that never change. And this is the diffuse. You know what? I've done some tests and for something like bricks, this is enough for some other kind of stones, like natural stones. It's better if we add a little bit of blur after the mask. And of course we put quality to one and we're going to control the intensity, you know, exposing this. So let's expose the intensity. Let's write, you know, blur intensity. All right, that's it. And now we need to do the same thing for each, you know, for each, oh, I forgot, I made a mistake, for each other, you know, output. So uh, this is the diffuse, I'm copying it, and I'm taking normals, one in the foreground, the other in the background, and then in the normal. And again, for the specular, even if, you know, nowadays, specular is not really used in the array or corona whatsoever. Glossness, one in the foreground, one in the background, are in the glossness output, and the last one, it's the height map, the displacement. So this is it, this is it, and that's it. And, you know, we just export, you know, the, uh, the mask, you know, after the blur to this output, so we can keep track of uh, the shape 
of the mask from the outside. Now, we save. Uh, there's one thing last to do. Um, when we save and, you know, we, we want to go in Substance Player to, you know, export, um, you know, many, many set of textures because we don't just need one diffuse. We want, I don't know, like 20 different diffuses, 20 different normal maps and so on. I don't want, you know, I don't want to do it manually. I don't want to change the random seed manually. I want to make it, you know, automatic. So what to do? I double click. This is something we discovered last year. Uh, you can do this process, you know, you can make this process automatic with Substance Player, but you need to do something here in the designer first. You need to change the random seed, uh, not, you know, um, and, and you have to write a, a function. So the random seed is not um, um, changing by like, you know, by you, but it's going to automatically um, change uh, because of time. So I click on empty function. I'm here in the function of the random seed and I have now to uh, write a function. Don't worry, don't be afraid. It's a really simple function. We need to, you know, write um, spacebar and get float. And the only one, the only float variable that Substance Substance Designer uh, give us is the time. Now we have also blur intensity, but you know we need time. Uh, this is the default um, variable that you get from Substance Designer, and the, the random seed is not a float. A float is a number with digits after the comma. Uh, a random seed is an integer, is like one, two, three, four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we need to translate this float into an integer and again you know oh sorry we can just press spacebar and write to integer and now we connect these two nodes uh, these is the you know final number it's our uh, random seed but we have to tell substance designer we want this as a random seed so i right click and click on set as output node and that's all that's all you need to do and as you can see, if you double click on the empty space here, the random seed of the main graph, you know, you cannot change it anymore from here. You cannot, it's going to change automatically every second when we go in Substance Player. Uh, that's it. Um, I don't want to see the preview of the bricks and the preview on the, of the endless masks in Substance Player. So I double click on the endless mask and here in the main uh, no, attributes output computation, I press no. And also in the bricks, output computation, I press no, and that's it. And when I press on this icon here, you know, to go and save and go in Substance Player, then the shader will be uh, reloaded in Substance Player, as you see. And we have only the um, endless bricks. We don't have bricks, we don't have the endless mask. And so it's easier, you know, to, uh, to work now. It's, clean, it's, it's much more cleaner. Um, of course, what we do here is um, it's just an export task. So we can change, you know, the size of our, our textures. And you can see we have diffuse, we have normal, specular, glossiness, height. We have also the mask. Um, and you can preview the mask from here. Uh, as you can see now, we don't have the... Um, we don't have the power to, um, you know, modify the uh, the mask itself. So what we need to do is to go back here in the endless bricks and expose all these parameters. Okay, we need to expose the position x, position y, edge width. and edge roundness. So you see, if you expose something, if you expose a constant into a Substance Designer graph, and then you save, and then you click this button here to go back to, you know, the Substance Player, you know, you magically get now the variables from here. So we can, you know, adjust the mask directly from the Substance Painter and we go up with the resolution. And here, you know, we need like, uh, the random seed now is changing every second. Uh, we have like a default option here with 30 second, 
uh, 30 frames per second, but just we want just one of them. And so I press one, I click here, and here I can change the you know number of frames, which is the number of sets we want. And I press 20, I press OK, and then you see you can see from the from 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 you know the timeline that every time that we go up by one second, the texture is changing. You can see from here, you can click on fit. You see the texture change, but you know not the bricks on the border. So we are happy, really happy with the result. And we can click on export bitmap and we can, you know, export all those bitmaps in one second. We can, you know, uh, pick a folder, go on the desktop, make a new folder, select the folder, change the format. You know, you can, you know, if you want, you can export like the diffuse first in JPEG and then the height map and all map in PNG, whatever you want. You can see here, we can start from uh, the frame number zero, which is random seed zero to, you know, the end frame 20, which is random seed 20. We click on export and boom, all the textures are going to be exported in one shot. And we can just simply, you know, then randomize um, the entire folder with multi-texture and barcon tiles. As you can see, if I go onto the desktop, new folder, see, Substance Player is exporting all those textures for me just with one click. So now time to start 3ds Max and test all those textures to see if this works. So here we are in 3ds Max. I created a 300 meters plane and Let's suppose our textures are just three meters um, length. So this is a UV map, a UVW map. You know, as you can see, it's 300 centimeter for 300 centimeters, like three meter for three meters. I want to show you like um, the old way. I mean, if you if you have a, a shader with just one single texture applied to this very very big plane what happened is this you can see the repetition so what to do let's take a new material let's start from the diffuse let's add a Bercon tile map now um, I've done a few tests. Uh, this is the easiest way to set up a Bercon tile. First of all, you need the UVW map exactly as big as the single texture you are going to apply. So in my case, it's a three meter for three meter. And then you set up everything at one. So size one, uh, tile width, one, tile height, one. I don't need any grouts. So let's put zero in the hatch width zero in the wedge height, none in the softness. We don't want round corners. I don't want a stretcher bond as a pattern, but something custom. So I want just like, you know, a grid of textures, one, you know, close to the other. So I go down to the custom bond pattern and I choose to go with a zero, one, one, um, which is basically the offset, the height and the width. So I delete all the stuff, I don't need that. And that's it. What I need to do is now, you know, to put something into the, into the, um, you know, something to randomize. And so I'm going to pick a multi texture. And I want to use a color just to, you know, show you a preview of what's what's going to happen. So I click on Bercon tiles. I choose a little bit of randomization of the gamma, and I apply this material. And now. This is what happens. You see, every three meter, there is a different texture, um, you know, which is a different color uh, in this moment. So it's going to work. I can also render in IR and, you know, move the camera out 
and you can see you know we have a three hundred meters square full of you know three meter three meter single textures now let's change you know these colors into textures so i click on textures i stop the render for a second i go back to zero in the randomization manage texture add me map and i load all my you know 20 different uh diffuse textures all right and then i render again and tada no tiling you know no no repetition anymore and you can you know i will like go closer and as you can see there's no visible repetition anymore if i select the plane and i put the you know standard material you will see the repetition in a second so after six months of tests and you know suffering i can tell this is working i'm pretty happy with the result i'm pretty happy also because you know once you've done it after the first time it becomes easier uh all you have to do is to uh, work on your shader explore the shape of your bricks say you've as many set of textures you want automatically with substance players and let's say that in five minutes you can have you know as many of textures that you want so i hope you enjoy this tutorial it's my first tutorial so you know i've made a lot of mistakes probably i repeat myself uh, a lot of time if you have comments please write them down below here in the video on YouTube. Really appreciate that and I will try to reply, you know, uh, to everybody. Remember, download the SBS uh, file down here. Uh, I've wrote uh, comments on the notes, so if you forget about something, you can, you know, read and I hope it's going to work. That's it, that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Roberto from State of Academy. See ya.